from you? Yeah, I do one almost every night the last three months. Well, it sure ain't natural. I'm getting away from this light to catch her while I still can. Now oh, you'll be soaked to the moon before you get ten yards. Well, I'd better be soaked and barbecued. <laughs> You can't stay. We might catch pneumonia out there. You're not welcome in my house. Go away now. Go, go, go. Bubble. No, no, no. The monster. Now do you believe in those newspaper stories? You hear that, Bubble? You're the monster. Perhaps one day you will meet the monster. <laughs>
You, get these straps off of me. Let me loose, do you hear me? Lobo, yes, but he cannot speak. Lobo is mute. Because of the storm. I was afraid we are not going to have guests tonight. <laughs> Lobo! You have to rough with my patience. <laughs> Already he tires of our humble hospitality. I said, let me out of here. At the moment, I'm afraid it is impossible. <laughs> Who are you? Warnock. Dr. Eric Warnock. The name will mean little to you. <laughs> Lobo, our friend always returns home after his long, tiresome swim. What's your name? You find out. We will. Hey, watch that cigarette. What were you doing in the swamp? Watch it to you. That's enough of that, Buster. No tank town jail can hold me. I'll be out of this here rat trap in 24 hours. That's what you think. Vagrancy will hold you for 72 hours. Take him downstairs and book him. All right, let's go. Let go, me, I said. Take that out of me. Let's go. Where do you think you're going? What do you mean, where do I think I'm going? I got Captain Robbins' newspapers. You have, have you? And since when you don't leave the captain's papers with me? Since the captain told me to bring them in myself. When you read them first, you mess them up. Hold your tongue and give me those papers. I'll have you locked up for peddling without a license. Kelton, I got a license. Well, I bet I can make it expire all of a sudden. Hey, 
Here's the late additions, Captain. Look, why can't I work on this case? Get back to your desk. Yes, sir. And Kelton. Uh, yes, sir. I told the boy to bring the papers in himself. Yes, sir. But if you ask me... I didn't. Yes, sir. And Kelton. Uh, yes, sir. Where's Lieutenant Craig? In his office, I think. Send him in. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Hi, Captain. Hello, Dick. Sit down. Thanks. Seen today's papers? Is there anyone who hasn't? Well, there's one nice thing about birds. They never cause anybody any trouble. Your girlfriend writes a good story. She thinks so. Anything new? No. Twelve disappearances around this place and nothing to go on. And nothing this time, either. Uh, I've been around that swamp so many times, I'm getting web-footed. It's been fired recently. It's been fired several times recently. Jake Long's wife identified it a little while ago. The coat belonged to Leif McRae, his partner. They went hunting out by Marsh Lake. Never returned. Not much left of it. The boys found it floating in the lake. What about the rifle? About a mile from the old Willow place. All ties together. But it doesn't prove anything. You think there's anything in these monster stories? <laughs> Your girlfriend does. What about you? The police don't believe in monsters. Facts are our business. Facts and only facts, and don't you forget it. I'm telling you, the captain didn't see nobody. Now, please be a good girl, Miss Lawton, and go. Captain Robbins, will you tell this junior G-man to let me go? Kelton. Yes, sir? Let her go. Just as you say, Captain. It used to be a newspaper reporter could get information around this place. What in the world do you mean? Now he makes like a comic. <laughs> Dick Craig, I don't put much stock in the future success of our married life if already you're holding out secrets on me. You've been dodging me all day. Where'd you get an idea like that? You mean you haven't been dodging me? No. And all those times I called and Kelton said the line was busy, it really was. Yes. Okay, let's have the story on Lake Marsh and the monster. Eh, yeah, monster, monster. I thought so. There are no such thing as monsters. This is the 20th century. Don't count on it. Monsters, I mean. Now, Janet. Don't you now, Janet, me, and you can count our engagement off. You don't mean that. Yes, I do. No, she doesn't. I most certainly do. Well, then give him back the ring. What? If you're throwing over the marriage, give him back the ring. Now, Chief, I... Captain, give him back the rock. It's the only fair thing. I'd rather throw it in Lake Marsh first. Besides, we've got to leave our personal lives out of our business lives. As it should be. As I've been saying all along. Dog. Now, what about the monster story? Well, that's your own story. You wrote it and you're stuck with it. There's no such thing as monsters. Bonk, two more men have vanished up at Lake Marsh. That makes 12 in three months. Everything points to an inhuman violence. Or do you still stick to the alligator devouring Dog. routine? You're withholding news from the public. Janet, you may not believe this. But you've got all the story there is. You're right, I don't believe it. Well, nevertheless, it's the truth, except for the monster. Figment of your very vivid imagination. Why, we've got nothing more to go on than what you reported to the paper. The figment of my imagination is something I believe. And you haven't been able to disprove it. We've conducted every possible search. Monsters, it's fantastic. You know that. Our business is dealing in facts, evidence. Can't you see that? Men disappearing. <laughs> There's plenty of quicksand out there. Yeah, 12 went down in the same place. Well, we're doing our best to solve it. Maybe your best isn't good enough. Janet! No, I mean it. No clues. What's this? A dancing costume? And this? A pogo stick? Well, I've got to admit those were found at the lake. But remember, they were in your own story. No human did this. So you say. 
Well, looks like I run into a dead end around here. Okay, if you boys want to play a game of secrets, there's nothing left for me to do but take a run out to Lake Marsh myself. Over my dead body. That could be arranged. Goodbye. She's just crazy enough to do what she says. You know what, Captain? What? I think you're right. <laughs> Long time no see. Tilly, do you remember a couple of years ago in the real estate section when the old Willow Place out on Lake Marsh was up for sale against back taxes? Seems to me that was around November or December of 48. Want to see the piles? Yes. Just a minute. Here we are. October to December 48. In the top pile there. I won't be long. Take your time. I ain't going any place and... And neither are they. Find what you wanted, Janet? Yes, thanks. Sorry to leave such a mess for you. Well, that's what I get paid for. Be a dear Tilly. Call the boss. Tell him I'll be gone the rest of the day. I'll report in later. Sure thing. On something hot? Oh, it could be. Oh, and Dick, call him at headquarters. Break my dinner date with him. Tell him I, well, I have an ulcer or something. Leave it to me. I fix. Okay. <laughs> hi, Janet. Oh, hi, Marge. Janet, still on the monster hunt? What do you think? I think the boss has been looking for you all day. Something about the police wanting those monster stories 86. You've got the whole town in a panic. I didn't hear you. I said I know what you said, but I didn't hear you. I get it. See you later. Lieutenant Craig has been working on the case a long time, Professor. I'd like him to hear what you just told me. I should be happy to cooperate. Oh, hello, Dick. Professor Vladimir Strosky, uh, Lieutenant Craig. Glad to meet you, Professor. How do you do? Professor, will you uh, bring him up to date? Lieutenant Craig, have you ever heard of Loch Ness? I think so. That's a lake in Scotland, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then perhaps you are familiar with the Loch Ness Monster. Vaguely. A few years ago, I was called in by the British police to investigate the appearance of a monster at Loch Ness, with the thought that it was some creature left over from a bygone age. I am considered an authority on the subject of prehistoric monsters. However, I must admit that my investigation failed to get the desired results in that I did not see the monster myself, but others did. There are sworn statements. Professor, is it your theory that perhaps the Loch Ness Monster crossed the ocean and came to the swamp? I consider that possibility extremely remote. But the cases do bear a certain similarity in that there are so many varied descriptions of this uh, so-called monster. And I, I thought perhaps with my knowledge of such things, and with your permission, of course, that I might be able to shed some light on, on this mystery. Uh, that is the reason for my presence here. What do you think, Dick? Well, there's no denying we need help of some sort. And you'll keep your findings secret for the time being? As you will. 
You don't mind a little company? How do you mean, uh, company? Lieutenant Craig, at times the police can be quite useful. I should be most happy to have Lieutenant Craig's assistance. How soon can you be ready to leave for Lake Marsh, Lieutenant Craig? I'm ready. No, I, I suggest we wait until morning. There was a storm brewing when I came in, and it is so close to nightfall. According to reports, the monster <laughs> strikes only at night. Undoubtedly true, but the preliminary investigation should take place in daylight. <laughs> the night, the monster, all in good time. Sounds logical. Whatever you say. Now, gentlemen, since I just arrived in town this afternoon, if you will excuse me, I should like to return to my hotel. Certainly, sir. Good day, Captain. Professor. Until morning, Lieutenant Craig. I'll be here. Strange sort of bird. Where do I meet him? Here, 10 o'clock. That'll give him plenty of daylight. Well, see you later. Hmm, got a date? What do you think? I'll say you don't. I don't? A girl from her office called in, said that uh, Janet had a headache or some such thing. If she's gone to Lake Marsh alone, I'll take her across my knee. But the last thing I do. Well, there probably would be. Watch him, Dick. Strowski? Just a hunch. Right. Eric Vornov. You had a severe shock. How did I get here? Oh, that's not important for the moment. What you need now is rest. Rest. You will sleep. Leave for the lovely young lady. Sleep. Here we 
yards of fork in the road, and like they say in all good westerns, which way to go? Well, that's the road to the Willis place. Let's take a chance on that one. Okay. You know, I get to hate this swamp more every time I come out here. You just weren't born for swamp duty, Marty. Uh, I guess you're right. I'd like to transfer to a department as far away from here as possible. The wind and the rain gives this place a gleam that just isn't natural. And the ground is alive with crawling things, crawling death. You're right there, Marty. This swamp is a monument to death. Snakes, alligators, quicksand, all bent on one thing, destruction. Something strange about all this rain. The lightning's been going crazy, too. Maybe it's like the papers say, all these atom bomb explosions distorted the atmosphere. Maybe. You know, if I were this Professor Strotsky guy, I wouldn't come out in this swamp without a guide. You know, that's the one thing I can't figure. He comes to the office, and with all these monster stories, makes an appointment to come out here with us, then goes off by himself. Are you sure he came out here? Where else could he go? Well, let's get at it. Well, maybe after the accident, she found her way down the road and then back into town. I've got to be sure. Look, there's a coffee joint about 10 miles back. Let's go and check. Let's go. Okay. Where did you find her car? Not a sign of her. Where's Strowski? I told you not to let him out of your sight. Right, Captain. I don't like the looks of things. Well, get back to Strowski. I'll get word to you later. Yeah. You look worried, Dick. No one. Captain Robbins, her apartment, her office. No one has heard from her since yesterday afternoon. Captain Robbins is checking further. Okay, but what do we do? Orders. Find Strowski. Uh, get me the city desk. Hello, Jim. Yeah, about the Lawton girl. Uh, he just called me, too. Who saw her last around your office?
Don't be afraid of Lobo. He's as gentle as a kitten. Put a tray down here. That is all. Get out. I said get out. Sugar? You didn't have your breakfast yet. Now it's past noon. You must be hungry. What happened to me? Your automobile. An accident. Lobo brought you here to me. What is this place and who are you? Don't you remember I told you last night? Did you tell me? Yes. I'm Dr. Eric Warnow. This is the old Willow's place. Yes. How did you know? I checked our real estate files. A Dr. Eric Fornoff bought the Willow's place in November of 1948. You are a newspaper reporter, huh? Yes. My name seems to mean much to you. Well, actually, it wasn't your name I was interested in. Through the mysteries of Lake Marsh and the Willow's Place being right on the lake, I looked in the files to see what happened to it. Your name was there as a purchaser. I thought perhaps you might have heard something about the monster. Oh, my dear Miss Lawton, I... When did I tell you my name? You didn't. But since you were unconscious, I took the liberty of looking into your purse. You must have seen my press card. Yes, I did. Well, since you knew the answers already, why the third degree? And who or what was that monster? Oh, he's quite human. I discovered him in the wilderness of Tibet. He has been quite useful to me at times. But now... Since your tiring experience, I think we have talked too much. I'm not the least bit tired. But you are tired. You are so tired. Strange. Suddenly. I do feel very tired. Yes. Very tired. Very tired. Bubble. Take the girl to my quarters.
Dear Professor Strauski. Well, it has been a very long time. What enough? It is you. You can see. In Paris, I missed you by a month. In London, a week. At Loch Ness, by only one day. <laughs> the monster of Lake Marsh sounded again like you. Why that sudden interest in me, Professor Strauski? Experiments in atomic energy, of course. Ah. So my dear country now believes in my work and that it can be a success. Our government wants you to return, Vornoff, to continue your research and experiments there, where you can have everything at your disposal. <laughs> Why do you laugh? Surely this is not a laughing matter. My dear Professor Strauski, 20 years ago, I was banned from my homeland, parted from my wife and son, never to see them again. Why? Because I suggested to use the atom elements for producing super beings. Beings of unthinkable strength and size. I was classed as a madman, a charlatan, outlawed in a world of science which previously honored me as a genius. Now, here in this forsaken jungle hell, I have proven that I am all right. No, Professor Strauski, it is no laughing matter. Yes. Yes, indeed, it was a tragic error. But as soon as I learned how correct your findings were, always have been, I informed those in authority. Vornoff, I have searched for you everywhere. Everywhere I hear stories of monsters. Now I am here, sent to bring you home. Home? I have no home. Hunted. Despised. Living like an animal. The jungle is my home. That I will show the world that I can be its master. I will perfect my own race of people. A race of atomic supermen which will conquer the world. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. A truly great master race. Such as I convinced my superiors only you could create. One with which our government can rule the world without debate. You misunderstand me. Strauski. I don't intend to return home. My plans are for myself. Are you mad, Vornoff? One is always considered mad. You want to discover something that others cannot grasp. Our government ordered me to bring you back. I'm afraid you will find it rather difficult. You see, Vornoff, I did not come alone. Neither did I, my dear Strauski. Bring him along, Lobo. <laughs> Hurry!
Athos Tomowski. You will get a much closer view of the product of my genius. <laughs> the lynched monster of Raid March. <laughs> Your country offers fame and fortune for my return, but my price is so much more great. <laughs> you will disappear, Professor Strauski, just as all the others have disappeared. <laughs> What Strowski used? I'd make book it is. It's getting dark now. You take the car and go down to the beach. I'll go through the swamp to the old Willows place. Okay. Oh, uh, here. Better take this with you. Right. Oh, Marty. Yeah. If you see anything suspicious, you know where I am. Trouble is, everything in this swamp is suspicious. What can I do for you, sir? Captain Robbins. Homicide. Why, Captain, I haven't murdered anyone in a month of Sunday. Did Janet Lawton stop by here late yesterday afternoon? Oh, no, just like a policeman. No sense of humor. Yes, she stopped by late in the afternoon. Remember the time? Well, not to the second. She came in around 2 and left around 3.30. Then again, that isn't so late, is it? What's she want? She was looking for information. That I'm sure of. Do you happen to know what that information was? Well, sure. Well? Well, what? Must we play games? I didn't know we were. What was Miss Lawton looking for in the files? Oh, well, why did you ask that in the first place instead of all your chit-chat? She was looking over the real estate files in October, November, and December of 1948. In particular, the sale of the old Willows place out on Lake Marsh. Did she find what she was looking for? Well, I guess she did. At least she found the sales notice. I saw it myself after she rushed out. 
She left the paper open at the November 26th date. Want to see it? Why, very much. Well, it's right up there. I haven't had time to put it back yet. Yeah, Dr. Eric Varnoff. Give me all you have on him. I'll hang on. Now we're ready for the girl. to the table. Do as I command you. I teach you to disobey. Ah! Ah! You will obey. Ah! I permit. Ah! I, I command you. Equipment ready. Hurt just for a moment, and then you will emerge a woman of super strength and beauty, the bride of the atom. You're insane. My paper knows where I am. You can't hurt me. Get away with it. As soon as my experiments are completed, no one can ever touch me. I will make the law. I'll obey. Whether I succeed or fail, it will not hurt you very long. Let me go! Let me go! You heard what you said. Who are you? For one thing, the police. Now, turn her loose and make it fast. You have the advantage for the moment. Stop talking and turn her loose.
Lieutenant Craig. We found Strotsky's car down the road. The lieutenant took off through the swamp, sent me down here to the beach to wait for him. Where was he heading? Old Willow's place. Counting? Yes, sir. Now, this is your first time out. Don't mess up the operation. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Martin, you stay with me. Yes, sir. Come on. Sure, my experiments on the young lady will interest you. I'll live to see you hang. <laughs> there are much more important things to attend. I hope the straps are not too cutty. Lovely skin should not be marred.
Kelton, you station yourself here. You men surround the house. Martin, you come with me. All right, Captain. Ready? Right.
he tampered in God's domain.